Steve. Welcome to Victory Harbor. We're so glad you guys are with us today. Let's worship the Lord. He alone is worthy. Today's sermon nugget is the grip of temptation. Can you see him? He's running. He's struggling. He's going as hard as he can. He keeps looking over his shoulder. Something has a hold of him and it won't let go. He, he's desperate. He's given his all, but he keeps going backwards and backwards. He's just like a fish that's took the bait. And he's being reeled in and reeled in. And he keeps looking. And he wants to be free, but he can't be free. And he says, oh God, oh God, how did I fall into this trap? Oh God, oh God, why didn't I listen to your word? And he finally is reeled all the way in. Then all the angels of heaven begin to weep. Because another one of God's greatest creations falls to that terrible beast, that beast called temptation. Today we're going to read from three different places. The first one's going to be 1 Corinthians 10 through 12 through 13. The second is James 5, 8 through 9. And the third is James 1, 12 through 15. If you think you are strong, you should be careful not to fall. The only temptation that has come to you is that which everyone has. But you can trust God who will not permit you to be tempted more than you can stand. But when you are tempted, He will also give you a way to escape so that you will be able to stand it. Control yourself. Be careful. The devil, your enemy, goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to eat. Refuse to give in to him by standing strong in your faith and know that your Christian family all over the world is having the same kind of temptation. And this is James 1, 12 through 15. When people are tempted and still continue strong, they should be happy. After they have proved their faith, God will reward them with life forever. God promises this to all who love Him. When people say, excuse me, when people are tempted, they should not say, God is tempting me. God does not tempt anyone. But people are tempted when their own evil desires lead them away and traps them. This leads, this desire leads to sin, and then the sin grows and brings death. In the book of Judges, there's a story of a man named Manoah. Now, Manoah has a wife, but she's barren. She can't have children. One day, the angel of the Lord comes to Manoah's wife and says, You will bear a son, and he will deliver Israel from the Philistines. But you must listen carefully. You must not eat anything that's unclean. Drink wine or beer. When he is born, you must not cut his hair. He must not eat anything or drink anything unclean. He will grow strong and will deliver the children of Israel. Samson is born and he grows strong and he's the strongest man on earth. And he's doing good. But then one day he's nearing the Philistines. He sees a young Philistine woman there. And he desires her. Temptation has reached out and grabbed a hold of him. His family, his mom and dad, try to convince him to marry somebody of their faith. But no, he wants that ballistic girl. One day as he's going to visit her, a lion attacks him. He kills the lion with his bare hands. Short time later, when he's going back to visit her again, he sees the lion's carcass laying there with honey from a beehive and he reaches down, gets some of that honey and eats it. 
The wedding party is getting ready to start, getting ready to set up. It's going to take about 10 days for the wedding to happen. The girls' family has invited 30 Felicity people that are very important in the community. Samson makes a wager with them. He said, I'm going to give you a riddle. If you can answer it, I will buy each one of you a suit of clothing, a change of clothing. But if you can't, each one of you will buy me a change of clothing. And they said, what's the riddle? And he said, out of the eater comes something to eat. Out of the strong comes something sweet. Well, they couldn't answer the riddle. So time's going by and it's almost the day of the wedding. And they finally coerced Samson's fiance to tell him. Then temptation number two hit Samson. He's out for revenge. He's mad. He's angry. He goes out and kills 30 Philistines, takes their clothes, and give it to those that he made the bet with. He's angry. The girl's father gives her to another man. Samson is really angry then. He gets foxes and sets fire and burns up their crops. That was temptation number two. Temptation number three, he meets Delilah. And Delilah is set in there to find out his secret of his strength. He finally gives in to her. But first he tells her. She asks him how, how to how he might be conquered. And he said, if you take seven bow strings and bind me with it, I won't be able to do anything. So she does. But he snaps the bow strings. If you use a rope that has never been used before, you will bind me. He snaps the rope. If you take seven braids of my hair and tie it to a loom, I can't be free. He gets free. So, she really lays on the temptation to him. You don't love me. If you love me, you would tell me your secret. Samson tells her secret. He ends up being blind. Temptation will get to you. Temptation will destroy you. Temptation comes at you when you your weakness when you're at your weakest point. Satan uses some things to get to you. There are some entry points that the devil uses. He uses first your eyes. You see something and you know it's wrong and you desire it. When you see that, turn your head, get away. Don't keep looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. It will get you. Ears. Entry point two. Ears. You hear something you shouldn't hear. Whether it's gossip, or maybe it's the wrong kind of music you shouldn't be listening to. Or maybe it's a bad joke you shouldn't be listening to. But you want to hear it. Your ears are pricked up and you're grabbed by it and you listen. The nose. Smell. Temptation can enter through that. Let's suppose you're on a diet. And you know there's a donut shop down there. So you go the wrong way to keep from going to that donut shop. Then one day you think, well, I am stronger than that temptation now. I'll just drive that way to work. And you smell them donuts. And you can't help but pull in and get you some of them donuts. You have fallen to temptation. Your mouth. Watch what you taste. But also, very important, watch what you say. Don't be just involved in gossip and bad talk. Don't slander someone. Throw off on someone. The next one's touch. You see it, you want to grab it. You grab a hold of it. You want it so bad. Now after these temptations come, the next thing that happens, you begin to think about it. You think about what you've seen down there and you drive back down there to see it again. You think about how good that smell, and you go back and smell it again. Then you are consumed with a desire for it. 
next you justify. Then you wait for that opportunity. Look out as you grab it. It's going to grab you. As you reach for it, it's reaching and wrapping around you. It's trapping you and snaring you. Temptation always comes wrapped in a beautiful package. Like I said earlier, it comes to your weakness at your weakest moment. Temptation is based on some lies. The grass is always greener on the other side of the field. You and your wife or you and your husband are getting along okay. And they hire this new employee at work. And you think, wow, that's better than what I got at home. That greener grass is drawing you. Well, I assure you, it's only a, a field of weeds. Don't grab a hold. No one will ever find out. That's the second one. The Bible says that what's said in secret in the closet will be shouted from the rooftop. Then we say, well, it's not really that bad. You know, it could be worse. I could kill somebody instead of committing adultery. I could kill somebody instead of stealing. I could steal instead of gossip. That is a lie. The next one, everybody's doing it, so it's got to be okay. Temptation works on our feelings and our emotions. Somebody did you wrong and you've got to get even. They cheated on me, so I'm going to cheat on them. I really deserve this. I don't need to go to church today. Temptations. Temptations override our better judgment. We know better. I want you to listen to this. Surrendering to temptation is sin. And sin separates us from God. Giving in to temptation is addictive. When we give in to temptation, it's easier to give in to the next temptation. But Jesus makes a way of escape from all temptation. Remember, don't look, don't listen, don't taste, don't smell, and don't touch. But more important than that, plead the blood of Jesus and run away as fast as you can. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for us. Thank you for your mercy, God. Lord, if there's anybody out there that's dealing with temptation right now, set them free. Deliver them, let them open their eyes and see. We ask you, God, that you would save the lost. Help us, Almighty God, to be in love with you. We thank you and ask you in your name, Jesus. There's a lure dangling in front of you. Don't take that thing.